Hi, one of the goals for studying sociology is to understand how sociologists do uh, our research. How do we go out and get data? In other words, what gets our results above just mere opinion? You know, we all sit around and have a BS session, drink some beers and say, well, this is what I think, this is what I think, this is what I think. Well, this what I think is the starting of sociology, and that's our hypothesis build building. Then we test those hypotheses using some type of research method where we collect data, and then we use some statistical analysis to see if our conclusions are correct or not. Now let's, let's go through an example here. What we're doing is hypothesis testing. What's a hypothesis? It's an educated guess. I review the literature. I look at uh, all the things that have been written, or as much as I can read, and try to find out what have other people found. And then out of that, I come up with an educated guess, and I design a study, and then I do a statistical analysis. So in hypothesis testing, let's take one specific example. I'm a big believer in the concrete leads to the opening the door of the abstract. So let's use an example. If you look at church attendance or synagogue or, or mosque attendance and happiness, uh, is there any relationship between the two? Are people who go to church happier than those who don't go to church? Well, let's take a look at that. So our hypothesis will be people who attend church, and by that I'm referring to church, mosque, temple, religious uh, uh, services of any sort, attend church weekly, we will be happier than those who never attend. All right? Now notice this is an interesting sociological question because we can't sociologically test whether one religion is right or wrong. We can't test heaven sociologically. Those are a matter of individual beliefs. But what we can test is the effects of religious belief or behavior, in this case, upon a per person's behaviors or attitudes or beliefs or levels of happiness. So we start out with this hypothesis. People who attend church weekly, how do we get data on that? Well, I happen to have a, a set of data that's a national set of data that has a couple thousand people chosen from across the United States of America. It comes from a micro case database. And if we look at that, we find specifically that 24% um, of those who never attend church say they're very happy. All right, so we're in the process of hypothesis testing right now. Now, that figure tells us something. It says about a quarter of the people who never attend church say, I'm very happy. That means 75% of the people answered something else in this pretty, very happy, pretty happy, uh, not happy sort of question. Then we look at another set of data, and we find, with the same set of data, we find that 41.7% of those who attend weekly say they're very happy. Right, so on the surface we have a great deal of our hypothesis testing done. We've taken a sample that is nationally representative. It has to be chosen in a very specific way so that it's not just my neighbors or my friends or the people I see at the gate of the state fair. And when asked are you very happy, happy, or not too happy, 24.5% who never attend church say they're very happy. Well, 41, almost 42% of the people who attend church, synagogue, or mosque weekly say they're very happy. Does that prove our hypothesis? Well, let's, let's look at it very specifically. On the surface, it seems to, to very much prove our hypothesis, but let's look at it a little more closely. When testing a hypothesis, we follow the following model. And in that, the first thing we ask is, number one, does the data go in the direction predicted by our hypothesis. All right, does the data go in the direction predicted by our hypothesis? Well, yeah, 42% of the people who attend weekly say they're very happy, while only 25% of the people who say they never attend say they're very happy. So the answer to that is yes. All right, now let's not stop there. What would we do if the answer was no? The data did not go in the direction we predicted. 
Well, then we'd have to reject our hypothesis. All right. But in this case, we found that, yes, it does go in the direction we predicted, but we've got another step we have to take that's frequently forgotten about, I think, when we look at research. And that is, is the p-value, which you remember from a previous tape, means probability or statistical significance, is the p-value 0.05 or less. And what that means is 95 times out of 100, uh, would our data be likely to be pretty much the same? Or five times out of 100, we could find this by chance. So we're saying 95% probability is just fine that, that uh, we didn't find this by chance. So a p-value of 0.05 or less says five times out of 100, we might find data that's significantly different. 95 times out of 100, the way we did our study, we're going to find this data. So if the answer is yes, we accept our hypothesis. But if the answer here is no, even if the data is going in the direction we prediction, predicted, then we reject our hypothesis. We reject it, and I should put no there. If the answer is no, then we have to reject our hypothesis. All right. So we need an additional bit of data on the study. We've got the 25% who never attend church say they're very happy, 42% who attend weekly say they're very happy. The data goes in the direction we predicted, but we didn't have a p-value yet. The p-value in this study, which means probability, statistical significance, meaning the same thing, is 0 0.000, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So I'm saying if we did this study the way we did it, a thousand times, not one time in that study would we expect to find the magnitude of difference that we found between these two variables. So the p-value is 0.05 or less, well is 0 0.000 less than 0.05? Oh absolutely, big time. So now not only does our data go in the direction we predicted, but our, our uh, p-value is 0.05 or less, therefore we have to accept the hypotheses. And our research has backed that up. Okay, thank you.